Hey, welcome to Eddie and to Renee. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We get any young people, they'll say, what is that thing over there? What is that? What is that? Welcome to Paula, too. Welcome to Eddie again and to uh, Renee. Hey! Welcome to our friend from Thailand. Where the gang loves to go to see Queenie, the cutie of the burlesque show. And the thrill of the evening is when out the way he skips. And the band <laughs> Welcome, the everybody. Well, the album that you hear playing, and yes, it's an album. And yes, I paid a dollar eighty-five for it. Some albums right now are selling for a lot of money, but I got this one real cheap. Traditional German polka music. And since we're going to be looking at a German machine today, a German machine that is from the late eight, 1980s to 1990s. Let me turn this down a little bit. It almost sounds like Bing Crosby singing that. So this machine is from the late 1980s going into the 1990s, and it's part mechanical and part computer. I would say more computer than mechanical. It's got computer boards on top, on the bottom, and I'm out of order again. I'm going to be posting the progress pictures of this machine later tonight. I should have already had them out there, but the customer is wanting to pick this up sooner than later. This is one of my customers that's referred over by Joann's out of Marinette. And there's some talk of me partnering with other Joann's as well. I don't know where there are other ones in this area, but they like what I'm doing for their customers. And so we're going to keep on doing it. So, all right, here we go. All right, let me set this down. Oh, I got to do something else, too. Before we launch into this, I got to do something else. I promised my friends from Texas, Veronica and Emily Oyama, that I would take care of this, and I got to do it first. So continue to enjoy the album music while I'm doing this. All right, let me move this one back. The sound on an album is just totally different than what we're used to, isn't it? Totally cool. Do I need to say hello to anyone else? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, hello to Emma as well. Welcome to Emma. So if anyone speaks uh, or writes Thai, you'll have to reach out to our friend. Although it looks like our friend from Thailand is writing in English, which is cool. Yeah. So a little bit about this box. Let me turn this down even further. So this box is in follow-up to our contest giveaway that we just did, taking us to the town of Calico. And I would mentioned during the contest that Veronica had offered to donate a bunch of coffee. And I've been smelling this stuff for a number of days now since it was delivered by Priority Mail from Del Rio, Texas. 
or is it Del Rio? We have another Texan in the live stream right now. They can tell me, is it Del Rio or Del Rio? Del Rio, I think, isn't it? Any rate, they're from Texas, way south Texas. And this is a combination of coffee that I'm going to be sending off to our first, second, and third runner-up, and all the other folks that reached out after the contest that submitted essays for the Calico contest and provided their address. I'm going to be sending coffee to them as well, along with some of my pink grease and some other goodies. But apparently, Emily and Veronica also put some other goodies in here as well. So I'm going to see what that is. Let's check it out. And then we'll get into this 1471 that belongs to Gloria, who is from the great state of Michigan. So there's even a personal note in here. People from Texas, well, people from all over the U.S., they have a touch of class when they're a part of the cow country family. And Veronica and Emily wrote a personal note here. Let me show you what it is. Hold on a second. Hopefully you can see it. Thank you for all you do. There is one, two bags of coffee for each winner or participant. Extra goodies and coffee are for you, Veronica and Emily. I'm probably not doing so good with the camera. Let me see if I can hold it better. There we go. I wish you guys could smell this. All the way through college, I was not really a coffee drinker. And then I got past college and all of a sudden I got into the business world back in the day and I started drinking coffee. And if you could smell what this box smells like, Holy cow. Oh, my goodness. Let's see what's in here. This is fun. Oh, my goodness. There's all kinds of... What is this? Julio's or Julio's all-purpose seasoning. Fajitas, chicken, steaks, salads, fruits, veggies. It's a fancy seasoning of some sort i've never tried this before has anyone had this seasoning before let me straighten this camera a little bit we're way off there we go now we're straighter total fat zero i like that already oh there's julio and Lilia Garcia right there. Somebody, see them? Apparently the founders of this company. I don't know. Maybe this is a, maybe this is a Texas-based company. I have no idea. Cool. All right. I'm going to set this to the side. What else do we have in here? I, what are these? What are these? What are these? Oh, this this is similar, I think, to what Bill gave me at Christmas. Are these, do you melt them or something? Southern Daydreams, special edition, fusion. I think these are things that you kind of melt and then they release a scent. But it's a, it's a touch of Texas, isn't it? Southern Daydreams. I do dream of the South. I don't know how they knew that. I do dream of the South regularly. Because the South is such a beautiful place to live, isn't it? Oh, you should smell this. I just put it up to my nose. I'm having a daydream right now. I'm having a daydream about the South. Nice. What else do we have? Oh, heart of Texas. Home sweet home. I think that Veronica and Emily are trying to get me to move to Texas. Daydreaming about the South. Home sweet home, Texas. Come on, guys. I'm in Wisconsin. Ah! Nice. 
I'm going to sniff this one, too. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that smells so good. It smells so good. What is this one? Blue Bonnet Fields Live Wild flyer, Flower Child. I think that says child or chillo. I have no idea. I think it says child. Aren't those beautiful flowers? I'm going to sniff those too. Oh, gosh. Veronica and Emily have good taste. All of these smell fantastic. But I'm telling you one thing. I'm smelling the coffee above and beyond everything. What else? Oh, we got more goodies. Holy mackerel. Try opening a Ziploc. Try opening a Ziploc bag with one hand, y'all. Try opening a Ziploc bag with one hand. Good luck. All right. You guys can pronounce that. It says La Melinda Tradition something. Or I can't read that. If we have any Spanish-speaking folks, I bet you that that's got a little bit of Spanish in it, doesn't it? But at any rate, I'm going to check this stuff out, too. It's all Tex-Mex stuff. I mean, does anyone, whoops, does anyone know what this stuff is? I have no idea what it is. So if you know what it is, type it in the chat so all of us know what this is. I'm getting mystery stuff from the great state of Texas. And a fellow Texan probably knows right away what this stuff is, but I have no idea. It's kind of mushy. I'm kind of squeezing it a little bit, which I probably, there's probably a law in Texas that you can't squeeze it, but I'm in Wisconsin, so I'm going to squeeze it like Charmin. But it sure looks interesting, doesn't it? Yeah. Cool. See that? Sometimes a teacher, always a student. I have no idea what half of this stuff is. Texas chili seasoning mix. I know what that is. And I do have ground beef I just picked up, so this is perfect. Perfect. I wonder if it's spicy. Does anyone know if this stuff is spicy? I don't handle spices too well. All right. I've got my meal plan all set now. I just have to figure out what that squishy stuff is. I have no idea. What is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? Coconut candy? I've never heard of such a thing. It's by the same company, La Milenda, or something like that. Tradition something. Yeah. Coconut candy, Mega Bandera. Bandera. All right. Who speaks Spanish? Bandera's got to be Spanish, right? It's Spanish. Oh, yeah. It's totally Spanish. So it's got coconut in it. I figured that much out. Yeah, I know that. Look at this treasure trove, you guys. Hold on a second. All kinds of cool scents. Again, I'm convinced that Veronica and Emily are trying to convert me into a Texan. I already feel like I'm a Texan. But I've got this stuff. I've got this seasoning stuff. I've got coconut candy. I've got these other cool seasonings, all of which are saying, Scott, leave Wisconsin and become a Texan, dude. Become a Texan. Then I've got this Texas chili seasoning stuff. And this, I'm still puzzled. I got to look at the chat to see if anyone knows what this stuff is. Because it's really cool looking. Oh, God bless. Emma's jumping into it. Eddie's jumping into it. Renee is jumping into it. Thank goodness. Paul, what, what is this? What is this? Needed a user. Oh, wait a second. My album ended. Hold on. Panic, panic. What do we do? All right. I'm going to make this thing go up. Wait a second. Where is it? Okay. Raise that up. Bring this over. Look at that. It stops automatically. That's kind of cool. We'll flip it over. And again, if there's anyone really young in the in the live stream right now this is called an album and these used to be really big 
they were made out of vinyl back in the day. They were made out of vinyl. And uh, I don't know if this one is vinyl or not. It probably is. Okay, come on, come on, come on. And you're always nervous that you're not going to get it on the record and then it's going to skip off. You know what I mean? Did I do it? Yes, I think I did. Hold on. Come on, come on, do something. So I know I did. She remembers that music. This is a new friend that came to the workshop, you guys. Doesn't have a name yet. Doesn't have a name. I don't know what her name is. Yeah. All right. So at any rate, lots of goodies. And we haven't even gotten to the coffee yet. We haven't even gotten to the coffee yet. But I feel like I'm a Texan now. I feel like I'm a Texan. Yes, I do. Now, for any that were in the Calico contest... Oh, wow. I even got some sort of a... Oh, I know what this is. Let me set the camera down. I know exactly what this is. Hold on. So, I had prepared a... a coincidentally, we're looking at a FOF machine tonight from the 1990s, 1980s into the 1990s, the FOF 1471. The first machine that I had prepared for Emily and Veronica was a FOF machine. And I think it was a 336 or something like that. It's been so long ago, I don't remember, to be honest. But this is the first project that Emily made on that sewing machine that I prepared for her and sent to her down in Del Rio, Texas. And it's clearly a, a teapot, isn't it? It's, it's magnificent. I think it's a teapot. I hope it's a teapot. What is this, you guys? This is a teapot, right? Because she didn't give me any clues. Let's see. To Scott from Emily Oyama. So the first project that Emily made on her sewing machine that I prepared for her is this. Yeah. Wait a second. It's got like, no, it's got a tail. It's not a teapot. It's like a little flying something. What is this, Emily? You got to tell me, dear. Is this like a dinosaur? Is this like a flying dinosaur? It's got wings. Now I see it. Sometimes I miss the obvious, you guys. It's got these really cool wings. And it's got buttons on the front. Here's the little neck. It's almost like a like a little flying dinosaur or something. I can use my own imagination, but maybe you see something entirely different. But my dear friend Emily from Texas made this for me. The very first project on her Foff sewing machine. How cool is that? Thank you so much, Emily. It is fantastic. And, I, you know, initially I, I didn't see that these were wings. And I thought it was a teapot because I do drink tea. But it's clearly not. It's a flying something or other. Yeah. Very, very nice. And Emily is getting ready to go back to college and finish her college degree. She's been working as a teaching assistant at the same school that her mom, Veronica, works at. But she said, you know what? I want to go back and finish my bachelor's degree. And that's what Emily's going to do. So congratulations to Emily on that decision to go back and finish her college. And then to go on and do something that apparently she said she never, ever was going to do. She wants to be a teacher. I think teachers are very, very special. Very special. And that's what Emily wants to do. She wants to follow in her mom's footsteps and work with kids. Yeah. So very cool. So this coffee, let me let me give a plug for the coffee. Because this apparently is a family member that has this shop. Oh, you guys, I wish we had Smell-O-Vision. I so much wish we had Smell-O-Vision. Oh, man. This is some of the coffee that Veronica and Emily donated to the Calico winners and those that submitted writings. Anyone that reached out to me after the contest was ended, and we declared the, the, the grand prize winner, the second runner-up, the third runner-up. She provided enough coffee for everyone that submitted an essay, whether they were the final three or not. 
So if you're watching this and you didn't reach out after the contest and provide your address, you're probably not going to get any coffee. And I'm going to drink it all along with my Tex-Mex stuff. You know, even this mystery stuff right here. This is probably going to be great with coffee, whatever this stuff is. It almost looks like it almost looks like plumbers type putty or something like that. Like you could fix the leak with it, but I know it's not for that. I know it's not for that. So we here we have Colombian, and you guys can see the name of the company. This is somehow associated with Emily and Veronica's family down in Texas. So somebody somebody can Google this and tell us about this company. I didn't. I didn't. I'm just seeing it right now for the first time. So I didn't Google anything. So maybe you can look up this company and tell us a little bit about it. Somehow tied into maybe it's a franchise. I have no idea. But it's somehow tied into Emily and Veronica's family. So here we have Colombian. Here we have Mexican. Very, very nice smells. Oh, my gosh. The scent of coffee is just like, you know, you're waking up in the morning and someone has been kind enough. Or maybe you have a coffee pot that has a timer and it's starting to brew. It's starting to run that water through the grounds and you can smell it through the whole house. You guys know what I'm talking about. Oh, my gosh. Mexican. This is going to be someone's going to really be lucky to get that one. This one is Mexican, too. All right, what else do we have? And that may be the, the three flavors. I have no idea. But each one of these containers is apparently a half a pound. And you can only imagine if you bought this, this gourmet type stuff. Yeah, Colombian, maybe they're the, all three are the same. No, this is different. Costa Rican. Costa Rica. So apparently down in Costa Rica, they, they drink coffee too. Yeah, they do. And this is Colombian also. Colombian coffee is very, very popular, isn't it? Oh, I wish, oh, I wish, oh, I wish you guys could smell this stuff. This Here's our last bag. So Costa Rica and Colombia. So all kinds of different flavor options for this gourmet coffee that Veronica and Emily sent from Texas. Along with Emily's first project on her FOF machine. How cool is that? Very, wait, I got it upside down. I need to drink some coffee because I'm not even holding it right. Very cool. Very cool. Could be a dragon. Right? It could be a dragon or it could be a... I'll ask Emily what it is in her vision. But to me, it's either a dragon or a dinosaur that flies or something. Yeah. Cool. So let's get into this machine now after I've totally enticed all of you with this yummy coffee and this Tex-Mex yummy stuff that was sent as well by Veronica and Emily. And let's check out this machine. So I'm going to move this box out of the way. And thank you again to Veronica and Emily for their generosity in sending all of that delicious coffee that I can then pass along to those that were part of our Calico contest. So it wasn't until the 2000s, you know, around 2005, I want to say, that pretty much all the companies by that point had already moved. Let me turn this down. Pretty much all the manufacturing companies had moved all of their operations out of their original countries. FOF was one of the last ones to kind of stick it out. And they finally moved their operations right around the mid 2000s uh, out of Germany, out of West Germany. But this is one of those last holdout machines the FOF 1471, and then there was another model that followed this, the 1475 CD, which added a couple more bells and whistles to this 
basic design that you see in front of you right here, the 1475 CD offered an option where it had a plotting board where you could create your own stitches. So you would plug it into the machine and then you could move this little slider and you could make your own design and then the machine would sew it, which was kind of cool. And there was also a program that you could plug the machine into and do it on the screen on the computer. It was probably a little bit easier to manage than using the plotting device that they had. But the machines are incredibly well built and uh, still have, I would say about 95% metal throughout the whole body of them. So when you lift it up, you know right away, it's not a plastic machine. Um, although there certainly are plastic parts to it. But the fun part of this live stream is you're going to be able to jump in with me as I've done on other live streams and help me pick out what stitches we're going to be sewing. And you might say, well, we can't tell what, what the stitches are. Ooh, somebody just sent me a message. How fun. Hold on a second. <clears throat> it's someone that's telling me probably what the Tex-Mex stuff is. Maybe. Oh, okay. This is my friend Paula Noel from Florida She's cluing me into something because you know what? Sometimes I'm just clueless. So she was telling me that it is most likely, hold on. You know what? I'm seeing it now, Paula. Thank you. We have so many smart people in our live streams and on my leadership team. And Paula is one of them. She said, Scott, you know, I had said, oops, I got it upside down. I actually had it right side up when I had it like this. Now I can clearly see what Paula pointed out. And that is that this first project that Emily Oyama made down in Texas is not a dinosaur. Although, you know what? It could be. And it's not some sort of a prehistoric anything. It's an elephant. And Paula just sent me a text giving me a clue. There's the trunk. Wait, there's the trunk. When you look at it, I'm looking at the screen of the laptop right now. It's as clear as day that it's an elephant. Duh, duh. And there's the big floppy ears and the eyes. Because down, you know, when you look at it like that, the eyes don't mean anything. But now they all of a sudden mean something. And there's the tail as well on the back for the elephant. So, Emily, it clearly is an elephant when I hold it the right way. Not to mention when Paula sent me a text and said, Scott, turn it the other way. It's an elephant. Yeah. It's not a teapot. <laughs> Specifically what Paula wrote is she said, I think the teapot is upside down and it's an elephant. <laughs> oh, it's an excellent elephant when you hold it the right way, isn't it? <laughs> oh, thank God for texting. Yeah. So Emily, a very cool elephant. And I am honored that you shared it with me as your first project. All right, there we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. I bet you somebody else texted me too. You know, when you're on camera, your mind is racing so many different ways. And what's obvious to someone on the other side watching this, you know, they're like, Scott, that's so obvious. That's so obvious. It really isn't if you're in front of the camera. I mean, your mind is, I'm here and I'm, un I'm unboxing coffee and everything else. And all right, no excuses. I just totally miss the obvious. Yeah. I thought this was all German music, but it's not really. I mean, this is this is like like Bing Crosby, Dan, Danny Kay type music. That's okay. I've got more albums out in the car, so let's check out and see what these stitches are on this machine. Let's check out these stitches. Oh, welcome to Joel too. Welcome to Joel. So these are our stitches on this 1471. I'll kind of go across. What I want you to do is write down the number of the stitches that you want me to sew on this machine. 
I'll kind of go across real slow. And I'm not going to do any of the um, the uh, monogram type stuff, but any of the base base stitches that you can see, I'll do those. Hold on a second. My light came on again. I'm trying to shut it off. There we go. We can try these over here too. I, I didn't practice any of these, but we can certainly try sewing them. The 95, 96, 97, basically 90 through 99. So each person, if you want to grab, you know, two or th two or three stitches, we'll probably do a total of about 10 stitches, something like that. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to write down some of the numbers that you're interested in seeing this machine sew. I'm leaning over. Oh, welcome to Ross too. Welcome to Ross. Hey, Ross. All right, this is my last time going by them. So if you don't, if you don't put some numbers in the chat, then I'm just going to pick my own stitches. All right, I'm going to get dizzy. That's enough. <laughs> All right, let me get this camera set up. Oh, and um, right now I've got, let me tell you about the setup real quick. We'll kind of rewind a little bit here. Okay, did it end? Yeah, it ended. It stopped automatically. Perfect. So the setup is I'm using these new needles that I introduced to you the last time. I said that they were brand new. They're on the shelf at... Uh, major retailers right now next to the Schmetz needles. And it's called Hello Hobby, Hello Hobby Universal Sewing Needles. Hopefully you can see that, there we go. Hello Hobby. And they're cheaper than the Schmetz needles. So I, I thought I'd pick them up and just try them out. We tried them out on that previous live stream on, I don't even remember what the machine was, but we gave them a go and they did pretty good. So we're going to give them a go again. And these are what our friend Sonny calls harpoon needles. They're a size 100, which equates to a size 16. So they are big, big needles. They're not designed really to be stitching intricate type stitch patterns like we're going to be doing. But that's why we're doing it. Because after I've gotten done repairing and servicing this machine, it can do the impossible, even sewing ornamental type stitches with a size 116, 100 slash 16 harpoon needle. So we're going to give this needle a try. And then our thread is a Coates and Clark. It's, it's not even the dual duty thread. It's just a basic multi-purpose, all-purpose type thread that we're going to be using on top today. 
And you can see on this machine, it horizontally feeds. And then when you're winding a bobbin, which we can certainly do, because I noticed when I did a little bit of research online, apparently winding a bobbin is confusing to some people that own this model. I'm not sure why, but I thought I might also demonstrate winding a bobbin on the machine as well, just so folks are familiar with how to do that. And there's all kinds of bells and whistles on this, this machine that I'm not going to go over specifically, in part because they originally, the, the keys that came with this machine when Gloria got it are all in Germany, are all in German. Uh, and so she had to put her own little stickers over here, whether it was the programming key or the repeat key or the pattern start key or the single pattern key or whatever it was, she had to convert all of them over to English so that she didn't have to Google each time. Well, what does that mean? And it's, I don't know why with this coming through the U S marketplace and being sold by an authorized FOF dealer in America, why they ended up even shipping a model like this in German, because it's wired for the U S market. It's wired for 110, 120. And it's, it's it's bizarre. It's totally bizarre. Even Glory doesn't know. She's like, I I have no idea why all the keys were in German instead of in English. So there you go. But most of what we're going to be doing is working with the real basics of the machine. And whenever you choose one of those patterns up here that you guys saw the numbers for, there's automatically going to be default settings that are programmed into the computer boards that drive the train of this machine. And we can certainly modify them, but we'll probably, for most of them, we're going to go with the default because the programmers that did that gave us defaults that will give you the best pattern output for that particular stitch pattern. So what else can I tell you about this machine? It's got a free arm capacity as well. You've got a fairly good workspace here. The harp space is not huge, but between needle and pillar, You've got quite a bit of space. It is a very, very nice quilting machine. Uh, it also is uh, great for just all-purpose sewing also. Kind of moving my, my little stack to the side here. And to get the uh, free arm open, you just kind of slide this out. Kind of just moves away from the body. And then you can just lift it up if you want to get rid of it entirely. And just kind of set it to the side. And then inside of here... <clears throat> Again, it's not easy with one hand. They're like, hey, what are you doing? In here, you've got space for all kinds of extra attachments, extra bobbins, all kinds of goodies. And then on the lower half of it, you can kind of lift this up. Hopefully I can do it without knocking anything off. You can lift this up and then you've got additional storage space where you can put Schmetz needles, or you can put uh, lubrication oil or other bobbins or whatever you want to stick down here. I probably would fill it with gumballs myself, but, you know, that's just me. So a real nice uh, space. It's easy to remove it to make it a free arm sewing machine. And it's just, uh, it's a real convenient design. Plus you can, if you want to flip it out like this, you can access the bobbin easily enough in here. <clears throat> and when you set this up for sewing, you'll want to set it up so when you put the bobbin in, as you have it in the machine, as you can visualize it in the machine and you're drawing that thread out, uh, it's going to be turning counterclockwise. So it's going to be turning uh, to the left. And then right here, you've got easy access to drop the feed dogs uh, as well on this uh, model 1471. So, yeah. And what I what I elected to do is. Rather than putting uh, one of the plastic bobbins, I think most of you know, you've heard me harp about it before, that plastic bobbins can get chipped. Uh, they can, uh, you know, if they're left by a window or something like that, uh, the, the sun or the UV, depending on how intense it is, it can actually warp plastic bobbins as well. And so I'm not a fan of plastic bobbins. So what I elected to do <clears throat> on this 1471 is I grabbed, oh, that's actually not the correct one. Hold on a second. That's, I, I've got so many projects going on right now. I almost showed you a class 66 bobbin and boy, would that have been the wrong thing to do? 
because you don't want to put a class 66 bobbin in this model 1471. What did I do with the other bobbin? Maybe I already, I already put it away. But at any rate, I ended up, instead of using one of the plastic bobbins that Gloria provided that came with this machine originally, I elected to go with a metal bobbin instead because I just like metal bobbins. As a matter of fact, I'll probably grab a metal bobbin and show you exactly which one I put in there. Hold on just a second. And I'm going to put some more music on while I'm fumbling with that. So again, if you're very young, this is an album. Or some people just call it vinyl. Yeah. Okay, hold on a second. Is it so quiet in the workshop right now? So this next album is called 26 Nonstop Sing Along Honky Tonk Type Music. Honky Tonk Type Music. And if you've ever wondered what Honky Tonk looks like, we put this on the, on the player first. I didn't clean this one. Hopefully it plays okay. Apparently this is what honky-tonk people look like. Yeah, those are honky-tonk people. I could totally see myself in that crowd. Totally. All right, let's put this on and we'll jump into this and I'll grab that other bobbin I was talking about. This is like a slow lowering type thing, and it's so hard to tell if you're in line or not. Okay, let me grab that other bobbin. So if you have a, a vintage style FOF machine, If you have a vintage style FOF machine, this is a traditional FOF container. It's got all kinds of goodies in there. And it has these traditional style bobbins that you would use on, say, uh, a FOF 130 or a FOF 130-6. Or really any of the FOF machines can handle a bobbin like this. Even the one that Emily has down in Texas now that I prepared for her. And this is my preference because they're they're not going to warp they i guess they technically could chip but they're pretty bulletproof and they work beautifully on this 1471 so if you've got a similar model from the 1980s 1990s like this one that belongs to gloria and you're fed up with the plastic bobbins pick yourself up some of these metal ones they work really well and they spin truer inside of the bobbin case too metal is going to spin truer it's a little bit heavier and it's going to it's going to deliver that thread even better than the plastic ones will yeah so speaking of that real quick before i forget to do it why don't we wind a bobbin on this machine yeah probably have to change the camera angle <clears throat> fun song okay hopefully i'm not too far out the angle of this is just a little bit awkward isn't it so if you're going to wind a bobbin on this machine because again i saw a little bit of confusion online about this right here you've got an the spool actually you could use it for dual needle sewing or you can use it for winding a bobbin so i'm going to lift this up and move this into position like so Thank you. 
And since since Glory originally had a red type thread on there, I'm gonna go ahead and wind a bobbin of red thread for her. Now what you'll want to do is you'll want to go into your little caddy down here, your little storage area, and grab this other little cap right here to hold that thread in place. And then I'm going to bring the camera over closer so you can see how I thread this up. It's fairly simple, I think, but I've done it a couple of times. So then we're going to take the thread and we're going to put it right through this little thread guide right here. Right there. I set the camera down for a second, so I've got two hands. You just kind of snap it into place. Just kind of draw the, draw the thread from left to right and it just snaps in there nicely. Then you have to pull this out right here. And you're going to thread this kind of coming over there and around here. I'll show you. I'll do it first and then I'll show you. Just like that. So we kind of brought the thread over that little finger that kind of sticks out. And we kind of came underneath. And then we came around the back of that one right there. Like so. Then we're going to put our vintage bobbin on the machine. And you'll notice it has a little slat in it. You want to line up that slat on the little pin that's on the winder. There we go. It's not the, I wouldn't say it's the greatest system ever because it, it sometimes does slip out a little bit, especially when you're first getting it set up. And I know a lot of people put the thread through the little slat. I don't do that. And they just slide it from left to right to engage it. And hopefully I've got enough of a tail on there. <laughs> Joelle is making chili. I should share my Tex-Mex stuff with her. And then over here, the clutch is really easy because it's a single click. You don't have to, you know, turn it, uh, you know, full motion like on most clutches. On this one, you just click it. It's easy to click when you're doing it with two hands. You just rotate it, it's fully engaged when it's to the rear, and then just give it a click to the front, and then it's disengaged. So the flywheel, the balance wheel is turning freely, except for the bobbin itself. Yeah. All right, let's give this a go. Oh, it did slip off. Yeah, that's the only thing I don't like about this winding system is it tends to slip off a little bit. Hold on a second. Yeah, see, it slipped off again. Maybe, maybe it's that I'm winding either too fast or too slow. Oh, 
perfect music for winding a bob and listen to that. Hold on a second. We're, we're actually full already. So anyway, that's how you wind a bobbin. From here, through there, around and around the back of there, and then straight over to the bobbin from there. So, and a beautifully wound bobbin, if I must say. Yeah. How can you sit still to rake time? I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to tuck all this stuff away again. Good gravy. There we go. There we got it. All right, I'm gonna set that to the side as well. So if there's any confusion now out on the internet, now they've seen how to wind a bobbin. Thank goodness gravy. Okay, so back to the stitches up here. I wasn't looking at the chat, so if you type the number in, would you be so kind as to type it in again? Or if you join the live stream late, one of the moderators will give you a late pass and then you can write your number for the stitch you want to see this machine sew in the live chat. And I will look at the live chat in just a few seconds and write down all of the numbers that folks want to see. And we'll go from there. Let me see if I can hold it real still. There's our first group. And again, if you joined a little bit late, our setup is a size 100, which is a size 16 harpoon needle. So the the detail and the intricacy of these ornamental type decorative stitches won't be quite as outstanding as if I were using a smaller needle, a more appropriate needle. All right, I'm going to pass it back one more time, one more time. And then you guys are, if you type something in, you got it. If you didn't, you don't get it. So. Again, you can pick more than one. If you want to pick two or three stitches, that's cool. I don't mind. I'm looking over my shoulder, so hopefully I have it reasonably straight. All right, that's enough. My arm is going to sleep. My arm's going to sleep. Okay, so let me let me grab a pad of paper and I'll write down the stitch numbers that folks pick. And we're gonna jam right now, baby. We're gonna jam. All right, I'm looking at the live chat. So let's see, ninety. Paula put down uh, 96. So I'm writing down 96. That's going to be Paula's. And I've got Joelle with 55 and 96. So 96, which one is that? Oh, I see why you guys wanted to see it. Yeah, that's cool. That's totally cool. I love it. All right, so... 97, 97 for 
Renee. Uh, what else? Joel. <clears throat> Joel is 55. And she picked the same one as Paula with 96. So I'm not going to write that down a second time. Uh, Elaine. Elaine is uh, 98. She's not 98 years old. She picked 98. Don't send me any nasty notes of saying Elaine is not 98. She's like 26. For goodness sake, Scott. You don't recognize an elephant that Emily made, and now you're calling Elaine. Yeah, she, Elaine is not. For the record, Elaine is not 98. Doggone it. <clears throat> what else do we have? Emma. Emma also picked, uh, let's see. Emma, 52, 31, 94. 52, 31, <clears throat> 94. <clears throat> what else do we have? Renee is also going to pick, oh, Renee already picked 97. Okay. What else do we have? Oh, and uh, welcome to Christina from Brazil. Welcome to Christina from Brazil. Isn't this fun, you guys? I mean, I've got to just digress for a second. We, we've got friends that join us from Brazil, from Thailand. We regularly have people from Germany, from Canada. If you're still sitting in the shadows and you're not meeting some of our friends, international or otherwise, I hope you eventually feel comfortable enough to do that. That would be totally awesome. Yeah. All right. Any other numbers? 5596 55 Okay, so here's what I have. I've got Paula pick 96, Renee pick 97. We've got Joel with 55. Joel, some of these I didn't write the number twice cuz another person had picked the same number. And we've got Elaine with 98 and then we have Emma with 52, 31 and 94. So, if there's anyone else in the live chat that says, "Hey, I just I just came on. I just I just joined. I missed it. I missed it. I'll show you the stitches one more time. And then we're just going to move forward because everyone else is being real patient. And because you showed up to class late, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so here's the stitches one last time. One last time. I'll probably show them again. All right, there you go, there you go, there you go. <clears throat> All right, let's get this in position now. And yes, I added an LED light to this machine as well. This was the old bulb that was in it. It wasn't doing a good job, and now the LED light is doing a great job, but it also messes with our camera, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And this does have what is called a differential feed, where while you're sewing, you can lower this, and you can actually use it like a walking foot. It's one of the original walking foots. But for our sewing, we're really not going to need it. So I'm not going to engage it. 
but it's it's a wonderful feature that Foff came out with earlier on than anyone. And it really makes a huge difference when you're doing heavy duty sewing for sure. All right. Okay, so let's do let's do stitch 96 first. And I think Paula was the first one to pick that. So to set a stitch on this machine, it couldn't be any easier. This is our programming center right here. And we just go to 96. We'll, we'll use the first column to get the nine. And again, I always say when you're changing stitches, stitch selections on a machine, whether it's computerized like this or mechanical, always make sure that you've got the needle clear of the material because watch what that needle does. All right, so 96. So we got 96 selected. It's going to automatically give us a default as far as stitch width and stitch length. And uh, it, it makes it so easy, doesn't it? You don't have to pick anything. So we're going to try this one first. And we're sewing again with a size uh, 100 which equates to a size 16. We're, we're sewing with a harpoon, right? And we're using this brand, Hello Hobby Universal Sewing Brand Needles. They're available in Walmart right now. At least they are in our area. So if they pop up in your area, you can you can check them out. Give them a try. They're, they're quite a bit cheaper than the other brands. They're trying to get their name out there. So you can see what you think of them as well. Yeah. All right, let's check this out. And I've got 100% uh, cotton with a stiffener is what we're gonna be sewing with. Oh, I better re-engage my clutch again. I forgot to turn my clutch back on. There we go. We just wound that bobbin and I would have pushed on the, the gas and we wouldn't have gone anywhere. All right, let's sew Paula's stitch. Again, this is stitch pattern number 96. Let's see what we think of this. Yeah, I think I'm close enough. All right, here we go. perfect music and you notice that there's a try motion function to this stitch as well you'll see at certain points the feed dogs will manipulate the material back and forward and forward and back very rapidly actually not real rapidly just kind of average rapid Turn the music down. Hold on a second. And again, if we were using a smaller needle, an embroidery needle, maybe like one of the Schmetz size 75 11 needles. Uh, we would get even a better result, but you know what? When I get done with the machine, it's it's going to do the impossible. Sewing an ornamental stitch like this with a size 100 harpoon needle is probably unheard of, unless you're sewing on a real heavy grade uh, type of leather or something like that.
All right, I'm going to stop right there. <clears throat> oh, that is a... Paula has a classy type choice, doesn't she? Isn't that lovely? Look at that. I'll get it away from the lights and we'll be able to see it even better. <clears throat> so this is the first stitch that we've done on Gloria's model 1471. Again, they first rolled out the end of the 1980s and then they were carried into the 1990s. And then shortly after that, they introduced the uh, 1475 that was kind of like the the upgrade from this machine where they added other bells and whistles. But it really is a spectacular stitch. And again, sewing it with a size 16 needle, we're still getting a result like this where, I mean, the, the detail, the stitch quality, the stitch, pre stitch presentation is very, very impressive considering we're, we're sewing with a harpoon a harpoon needle, as Sonny likes to call it. Now, here's our, we're looking at the lock stitch now. Any difference on the lock stitch? Nope. It's spectacular as well. There's our lock stitch on the back for this stitch that Paula Noel picked picked out for us. And a couple of other folks picks it, picked this same stitch. Let me back it up a little bit. There we go. Beautiful stitching. Let me clip those threads and we'll move on to the next stitch. And that's the only downfall of albums is they don't run long enough, do they? They just don't run long enough. Okay, let me get that material back in place. Get that material back in place and we'll do our next stitch pattern now. Okay. What a lovely stitch that is. Wow. Very, very nice. Okay, our next one is 97. 97, and this one was picked by uh, Renee, if I did my notes correctly. And boy, is it easy to get to 97, isn't it? We just hit this plus one time, and we're at 97. And you can see it automatically gives, gives, gives us the defaults that the people in West Germany are saying, these are the best defaults, don't mess with them. But if we wanted to mess with them, we could. We could be rebels and we could say, well, I don't want to stitch with of six. I want to go with five and we could move it to five. Or we could say, I don't want a stitch length of three. I want something like 25 instead. There's no decimal point. I'm assuming it means three. Yeah, I didn't read the book. You guys, I, yeah, I didn't. So we're going to go with the defaults for Renee's stitch, stitch 97. Let's see what we think of this one. Let's see what we think of this one. <clears throat> For a little bit there, we had no wavering. I'm wondering if we can get back to that again. Right there, maybe that's the best spot for it, huh? Okay, let's try it here. Yeah, I agree, Joel. It does have finesse, doesn't it? It really did an, an outstanding job. And again, this is not a Schmetz needle. I'm going to lose my reputation here. I'm not sewing with a Schmetz needle. I'm sewing with this, I almost said Hello Kitty. <laughs> it's not hello kitty it's hello hobby hello hobby universal needle size 116 so i guess we could call it hello kitty put a little kitty right yeah any rate i better not mess with their branding i'll get some sort of a trademark violation okay so let's do renee's stitch now 
which is number 97. Let's see what we think of this one. And right now, with no music, we'll be able to listen to this uh, machine from the 1980s going into the 1990s do its thing. This, again, is a FOF model 1471. Here we go. 1471. Yep, I've got it pretty straight. All right, here we go. This is also a tri-motion. Watch how those feed dogs, it's basically manipulating, man, manipulating the pitman arm in the machine to very rapidly take the machine in forward or reverse. It's like dropping the, you know, the, uh, the, the shifter on a car from forward to reverse very quickly, which is not good for the transmission, but it doesn't hurt the machine at all. And Gloria, Gloria tends to be a person that likes to pull or push the material. So Gloria, notice right now, Gloria is our owner. Notice right now that all I'm doing is gently guiding it for this decorative stitch that uh, was picked out by Renee. I'm not pulling it. I'm not pushing it. The feed dogs and the presser foot uh, attachment are doing all the work. All I'm doing is guiding it. All right, I'm going to stop right there. <clears throat> Another very, very lovely stitch. This one is even a little bit more intricate than the first one. It's kind of a floral type, uh, almost an applique stitch, isn't it? And uh, this would be better served with a smaller needle, but we're working with a size 100. And it still is, as Joel, Joel had said, it still has finesse, uh, even being such a harpoon style needle. So let's let's take a look at this a little bit closer and see what we think of this one. <clears throat> Make sure I have it orientated correctly. Yes, I do. Okay. So these are the two stitches we've done so far. The first one was picked out by Paula, uh, stitch 96. And then we just got done sewing the second one, which is stitch 97 on this uh, FOF model 1471. And I'm surprised no one has pushed me and said, Scott, can you say that in German? So let's see if I can. Um, 1471. That's 1,471 or 1,471. So, yeah, not too bad. I haven't spoken German in a long time, so not too bad. Beautiful, beautiful stitching. And again, imagine if we were using an embroidery needle and some sort of a floss-type uh, thread. Wouldn't these be spectacular? They're, they're spectacular already. But even, you know, it's constant and never-ending improvement, right? We could make them better using a different style needle, a different size needle, uh, and one that's designed more for embroidery type stitching. Yeah. <clears throat> what about the lock stitch? Equally spectacular. Equally spectacular. And we can look at that original stitch again and then look at that second stitch that was picked out by Renee. Beautiful, beautiful stitching. And again, incredibly impressive, in my opinion, considering we're using such a, a, a huge needle to do intricate work like this. And this machine, um, I didn't ask the question. This machine originally, what do you think? This machine is an original owner machine. Gloria bought this brand new back as best as she can remember. It was like 19, 
late 1980s, like eight, 19, 1989 or 19, I, I don't know. It was, it was late eight, 19, late 1980s, early 1990s that she bought this machine. What do you guys think she paid for this machine? What was this machine? What did this machine cost back in uh, its debut, late 1980s, early 1990s? What what would a machine like this sell for? Again, they were still made in West Germany at this time. They were still made in West Germany. And then they got tricky later. So be careful if you buy a later model uh, FOF computerized type machine, because what it'll say is it'll say something like, uh, innovated or uh, they use a clever word to to point back to their roots of West Germany. But those later models that came around the mid, well, actually the late 1990s going into 2000, uh, they were no longer made in West Germany. This one was. So, but what do you think? What do you think Gloria paid for this machine? I'm going to look at the chat, see if anybody's guessing. Emma's saying right around 2000. Does that seem realistic? Or does someone think that Emma's Emma's uh, quoting a, an amount too high? Or maybe is she quote, quoting it too low? Right around 2000. Any other guesses? While you're guessing, I'm going to get our material back into place. But some beautiful stitches with the two stitches we've done uh, so far with this machine. I'm going to get this back into place. <clears throat> And our next stitch is going to be, let me see here. Our next stitch is going to be uh, stitch 55 that Joel picked out. Stitch 55. So Emma is the only one that's going to venture a guess. Uh, and that's okay. Emma is pretty doggone close. Uh, depending on where you bought it in the country, where you bought it, and, you know, different markets, they'll, they'll charge higher prices for machines when they're first rolling them out. And also some of the, uh, the dealers that are authorized FOF dealers, they also have some margin as far as where they can price that machine, depending on what they think the market will yield. Uh, this would have sold for somewhere between uh, 2000 to $2,700. I think a median price on it would have been right around $2,500, $2,500. And it would have come originally with a 25-year unlimited warranty. I mean, anything that goes wrong on the machine, parts and labor, FOF would have honored that. Uh, so it, it was really a dream warranty that this machine came with. And let's, assuming, let's assume that it would have been bought, say, right around, let's just, let's just go with 1990. Because they, they continue to manu manufacture these into the 1990s. If it was bought right around 1990, when would that 25-year warranty have expired? 1990 plus 25, where does that take us to? But it gives you an idea of how confident FOF was in their machines. Now, other manufacturing uh, groups today are still trying to market very, very big warranties. But when you look at the fine print, there's a lot of disclaimers and they don't cover parts and they don't cover other things on a lot of these machines other than maybe like for the first year on some of the makers. Brother probably has one of the greatest warranties right now contemporarily. But at any rate, 2015, 2015. So that's pretty doggone impressive. So Joelle's mom bought a similar machine for her 1222E. Paid right around uh, $1,500 for that machine. So you know what? These machines were, were quite an investment, weren't they? And you remember recently, very, very recently, we had that Janome uh, in the workshop here that I did work on for that customer. Uh, and... That one is still is still being paid for by the customer. Janome is trying to entice people to buy machines and and rolled out that one machine that I showed you guys recently uh, during the pandemic in the year twenty. 
what year, what year is this? 2022, right? So they rolled out that machine in 2020. And they were really trying to get people enticed to buy a, a new machine for around two grand, similar to the cost of this one back in the 1990s. And so they gave people the option to finance it. So, but I don't know if FOF was as much into that financing. I, I, I'm not familiar with what their financing options may or may not have been back in the day. Some manufacturers do that, some don't. So, all right, blah, 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 blah. All right, so our next stitch is 55. Let's set up 55. So we've got to go down from 97. There we go. Go all the way down to 55 so we can sew uh, Joel's stitch. Joel picked 55. And as easy as that, we're to that next stitch already. And again, notice my needle is clear of the material because that needle, you didn't see it. But as I was changing from uh, 97 down to 55, that needle was doing a little dance over there. And again, you never want it to be in the material when you're changing stitch patterns because it'll bend the needle. Might even bend a harpoon needle. Yeah, it might. So let's do this next stitch, right? Let's do this next stitch. And I'll flip over that album and we'll listen to a little bit more ragtime style music. <clears throat> Trying to make sure I have it on the album here. I think I do. All right, let's do this next stitch that Joel picked out. 55. Here we go. Boy, this one has a lot of tri-motion. Look at those feed dogs work it. Some of you know this already, but you can adjust the feed dogs on a sewing machine, any sewing machine. And uh, these were a little bit off when I got it. And now it's feeding so true. It's feeding so well, beautifully. That is if I steer it. If I don't steer it and I just keep gabbing, it's not going to sew as straight as it could. Yeah, it's not going to sew as straight. I'm a little bit off course, so I better focus on what I'm doing here. And stop right there. So this one, Joe, Joe, I'll pick out, and it almost looks like a snowflake to me. We'll look, we'll look at it a little bit closer up. <clears throat> Beautiful stitch. So this is Joel Stitch, stitch number 55. If you own a Foff Creative 1471 and you've never tried the decorative stitches, look at what you're missing. You're missing a lot.
Beautiful stitching. Beautiful stitching. All right, what about the lock stitch? Straighten it out, Scott. There we go. So all three of these are just utterly spectacular stitches in my judgment. They're really, really nice. Let's move on to the next one, which is 98. And Elaine picked this one. Elaine picked the next stitch. Let's do that one. Once I figure out which way this material goes. There we go. I finally figured it out. All right, let's change the next one, 98, 98. You know, they talk about the color matic series of the Husqvarna's and how they made it so easy by just matching colors for people to pick the stitch that they wanted. I think this is equally as easy, don't you? I mean, all we do is tap the programming key, either in the left column or the right column, depending on what number we're wanting to get, and we're done. And the machine automatically sets the width, the length, and all the other doodads, so we don't even have to try to figure it out. I think that's super cool. The Germans are very, very smart. Very smart. All right, let's go. All right, let's do the next stitch that our friend Elaine picked out. Here we go. Whoop. I should put my foot on the foot controller. Yeah. All right, do that. Oh, that's a pretty one. Oh, I like that. That's fun. That's very fun. Yes. Yes, it is. The camera doesn't want to focus on that angle. All right. I get it. The only thing I... The only downfall of this model 1471. And if I remember correctly, they, they rectified this when they came out with the 1475 CD uh, that was kind of the the successor and the, uh, the upgrade of this machine. Is on this machine, you have no control over pressure foot pressure. The machine regulates it for you which some people say, well, if I don't have to regulate the presser foot pressure, that's great. But for certain types of sewing, it can be a little bit of a, a, of a detractor in my opinion. All right, let me get this straight now. All right, at last, I got it. So as you're looking across, as I kind of 
line this up with the camera as best as I can. The first stitch again that we did all the way over here was uh, stitch 96 for Paula. Then we did 97 for Renee, the next one in column two. Then we did 55 for Joel, which kind of looks like a snowflake to me. And then we just did this last one in the far right column, which is pattern 98 for Elaine. So let me show these to you now. I can't help it, you guys. I gotta. <laughs> I love this music. Let's look at the lock stitch. <clears throat> oh, I thought I, I was already plugged in. Hold on one second, you guys. My computer is saying that the battery is low, but I've got it plugged in. That's weird. What the heck? What the heck? Hold on, hold on. Where is my cord? Oh, Jiminy Crickets. I I plugged it into the outlet, but I didn't plug it into the laptop. Scott, Scott. What the heck, buddy? Boy, that'll make a difference. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, now the lock stitch. Now that I have the computer plugged in, duh. Between not being able to see that what Emily made was an elephant and not plugging the laptop in, I better brew some of this coffee that Veronica and Emily sent straight away because I apparently need it, yeah. Absolutely gorgeous stitching. All right, let's do our next stitch. Let's do our next stitch. What is our next stitch? Oh, these are next stitches are going to be for Emma, and we're doing uh, 52, 31, and 94. Let's do 52 first. Okay, so this is pattern 52, and this is for Emma. Let's do this one now. Pattern 52. I love ragtime music, don't you? Yeah, I do. All right, here we go. Pattern 52 for Miss Emma from the great state of Florida. Florida! Here we go. Thank you. 
Yes, I'm doing a little dance in my seat. <laughs> the tri motion is doing it to the music. I love it. <laughs> go, 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 go. Again, this is pattern 52. And if you're joining the live stream late, we are sewing with a Foff 1471, which in German is 1471. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a lot easier to say 1471. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And yes, I can speed it up a little bit more. I'm going kind of mid range right now as far as speed. I'm going to slow it way down. Stop. And the needle up on this is really a favorite of a lot of folks. They love the needle up thing. Oh, this is a fun one too that Emma picked out, isn't it? I'll show it to you. This is pattern number 52 that Emma picked out on the far right. And then all the other ones that you've already seen that we did. Just phenomenal. And again, we're if you're joining late, we're sewing with a harpoon needle, a size 100, which equates to a size 16. So we're definitely not using an embroidery needle for decorative ornamental stitching like this. Gorgeous stitching. We'll turn it over and look at that lock stitch. No difference. Gorgeous, gorgeous stitching for the lock stitch as well. Let's do the next one. Let's do the next stitch. So the next stitch is going to be pattern 31. Again, Emma picked this one out as well. Pattern 31. And again, it's so easy to pick. Right now we're on 52. We just go down to three two little clicks and one more click here and that's it we're done because it does all of the choosing for us it picks the width the length and all the other doodads so we're ready to rock let's do it Stitch 31. Here we go. We're up to rig time music.
Wow, this one is really super complex with a lot of overlay to it. What a pretty pattern that Emma picked out. All of these are gorgeous. All of these are gorgeous, but this one really intrigues me. Wait until you see it. It's really kind of cool. I don't know how to describe it. I can describe how straight I sewed, which is not horribly straight, but you know what? I'm getting better. Yeah. Ha ha! All right. So this again is pattern 31. If you own or if you acquire a FA 1471, you can sew the same thing. Yeah. There we go. Beautiful patterns, aren't they? They're gorgeous. So again, from left to right, we're looking at uh, patterns 96, 97, 55, 98, 52, 31, and now our last pattern, unless someone else types a number into the live chat, our last pattern is gonna be pattern 94 that Emma picked out, pattern 94. And if you guys want me to show you the stitches one last time, we've got all this room over here. Look at that. We've got this room. If I sew even reasonably straight, we could probably do, a, after Emma's last stitch, we probably could do three or four more stitches. Yeah, we could. Those are gorgeous, though, aren't they? Lock stitch. Aha! Uh -huh. This again is our lock stitch. Uh oh, my album is skipping. Now imagine the presentation of these stitches if we were actually using an embroidery needle. Holy mackerel! And they're already fabulous! Fabulous! Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We're sewing with a harpoon needle. We're sewing with a harpoon needle. Ah, crazy. I love it. I love it. Yeah. All right, let's do our next stitch. All right, our final stitch, unless somebody types another number in. Aha. Final stitch. Number 94, 94, here we go. Done, done, that quick, I'm done. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. All right, final stitch, and I'll show you guys the stitches one more time. Even if you already picked one of these stitches, you can still pick another stitch. Yeah, you can because it's our classroom and we can do it the way we want to do it, doggone it. Yeah, we can. Sorry for saying doggone it. I'm just out of control. I, be I better drink some diet Pepsi. Yeah, I better. Oh. 
Oh, that hit the spot. Yeah. All right, so here's our stitch 94. Stitch 94. Here we go. This has a lot of tri-motion. Look at those feed dogs work. Those feed dogs are just going, hey, I'm working here. And all of the folks that pick stitches, the majority of them had tri-motion. And that's really what gives us that intricacy Without the feed dogs manipulating, if all we had was a standard feed dog feed and uh, and uh, the, the needle swing, the needle bar being able to move from left to right, etc., we wouldn't be able to get nearly the intricacy that we are because of the tri-motion. And again, the tri-motion is, I'm going to stop for a second, the tri-motion is the feed dogs rapidly going forward like twice going back three times, going forward twice, going back once, going back forward. They're, they're, they're changing direction at a crazy rate of speed in order to give us that beautiful stitch output. Listen to this machine run. This is an incredibly complex pattern that Emma picked. Incredibly complex. And again, we're sewing it. We're sewing it with a harpoon needle. We're sewing it with a harpoon needle. Absolutely insane. Oh my goodness. Wait until you see this one. All of them are spectacular. But this one, wow. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm just easily impressed, but I think that this one is even more complex than the last one that Emma picked and the one before that. Unbelievable. Wow. All right. Let's check this out. Wait a second. Let me get it orientated correctly. Yeah, I've got it right now. I've got it orientated better than Emily's uh, elephant. That's for dog on sure. And thank you again to Paula Noel for pointing out what should have been obvious. It's been a long day in the workshop. And I, I'll just use that as my excuse for not recognizing what that spectacular first project of Emily's was in the first place. Yeah. All right. Let me stand still. All right, Cam, do your thing. So again, from left to right, left to right, I'm going to try to hold it still while I'm looking over my shoulder. Pattern 96, 97, 55. Pattern 98 that Elaine picked out. Pattern 52, 31. And the last one we just sewed that Emma picked out, the last three of these, was pattern 94. Let's take a look at these, kind of go up and down, up and down. Again, imagine the detail if we were sewing with an embroidery needle. When this machine came in, I really didn't share any of the story with you guys because I haven't even posted the progress shots yet on Facebook. But this machine was a needle breaker. Uh, Elaine estimates that she probably broke about 20 needles with this machine. And it, it sounds like, okay, what's the big deal? You just buy more needles. But every time a needle breaks, it's, it's either hitting the throat plate or the hook system or both. And it creates scarring because that needle comes down with so much force. Metal hitting metal, right? that it can do some real damage. And the hook was literally destroyed on this machine. And it needed several adjustments and it needed uh, hook timing as well. But you know what? I don't look over my shoulder at the past 
other than to say, this is what we did, but look at what this machine is doing now. And again, with a less than ideal setup, a harpoon needle and generic all-purpose thread by Coates and Clark. Nothing against Coates and Clark, but this is their cheapest thread. This is their low-grade thread. It's not a fancy thread. And it's laying down stitching that is solid page 34. Both for the top stitch and also the lock stitch as well. This is our lock stitch now. Unbelievable, the, the quality of the stitching, the caliber, the, the formation, the, uh, the stitch presentation for sewing with such a large needle and low-grade thread. We're getting great results because this machine is performing at the top of its game now. It's no longer a needle breaker. It's no longer a needle breaker. It's no longer having issues with feed. It's no longer having issues with timing. It's running like top, tip top, top tip. Yeah, both. Both of those. And it's doing exactly what it's what it was designed to do as a Western Germany machine. One of the last Western Germany machines that Foff ever made over in that great country. So I'm as pleased as punch. Uh, we've been running long enough. I know it's getting late. <clears throat> it's getting late, especially for our folks on the uh, the East Coast. Not so much so for our California folks. For our California folks, it's only going on about, what is it, it's 8.30 here. So about 6.30 over in California on the West Coast. So we have time. We could certainly sew. Let me get that orientated right. We could certainly sew some more stitches. I'll show you guys, this, guys the stitches one more time. And if you go, boy, I really wish I had picked that particular stitch pattern. Then we've got room enough for probably three more, three more stitches. Four more stitches if I have a, a renaissance of sewing straight. Yeah. So let me show you guys the stitches one more time. And you can, if you arrive late to the live stream, I know we've been having people kind of come and go, come and go, come and go. And that's totally cool. But I'm going to go across these stitches one more time. And I've got room for about three, maybe four more stitches. So if you want to pick another stitch, even if you already picked one, go ahead and do that. And I'm going to look over my shoulder so I get it reasonably straight. Can't tell if it's in focus. I think it is. You guys should try this. I'm holding the camera. I'm looking over my shoulder and then I'm holding the lid as well. The lid, because the lid's kind of tilted back if I don't. All right, I'm stopping right there. So you can rewind it if you want to see those again. 
There we go. See how the lid would see how the lid is if you if you just let go of it, it kind of flips back, doesn't it? I also kind of like, I'm just gonna say this. I, I like the color of this machine too. It's almost kind of a kind of a dark chocolate color, isn't it? It's making me think of chocolate now. Yeah. Great color. All right, so let's see if we got anybody else picking stitches or the same person that picked stitches before. That's fine too. Let's see what we got. All right, let's see here. Okay, so Emma picked uh, Emma picked ninety. Let's do uh, ninety. And it looks like Renee picked uh, 88. Renee picked 88. And Christina from Brazil, I think she's saying 99. So we'll do 99. Cool. And those are none of those are repeats as far as I can see. Those are all new stitches. So we have 90, 88, and 99. And that's where we can stop. That's totally cool. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So let's do the first stitch that Emma picked out. And this is one of four stitches that Emma has picked out, which is totally cool. I love, I love folks getting involved. And as you feel comfortable, if you're still sitting in the shadows and you haven't joined the live chat yet. So that Paula Noel and and Emma and others can welcome you, uh, then I hope you decide to do that at some point because we're we're a very casual, laid back group. We learn from each other. There's no judgment. There's no criticism like you sometimes get in other groups. Uh, we all learn together. We all have fun, right? Yeah. So let's do uh, stitch ninety now. All I have to do is change the right column. And as easy as that, we're at stitch 90, which uh, Emma picked out. And this one looks really kind of cool. Really cool. Let's check this one out. And I'm going to move this presser foot over a little bit because I'm getting nervous that I'm a little bit crooked. I'm always a little bit crooked. All right. I think I got it. I think I got it. I might have it. All right. So this is stitch number 90. Stitch number 90. Let's give this one a go. And I won't turn on any music. We'll just listen to this model 1471 run. It's running so beautifully. Now, I know that I, as soon as Gloria sits down to this machine, Gloria, again, is the owner from Michigan. She is going to be so utterly tickled pink. All right, here we go. Blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Stitch number 90. So much happening down there by the presser foot right now. Look at that needle swing to generate this pattern that Emma wants to see. And along with that, the tri-motion of the feed dogs. Forward, back, forward, back, 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 forward, forward, forward. Just crazy. And again, Gloria, the owner, notice that I'm not I'm not pulling or pushing this material. With all of the action of the machine right now, I'm trusting that the feed dogs and the presser foot and uh, the machine mechanics are going to take care of the details. I can just relax and steer it. All I have to do is just steer the material a little bit and the rest will happen because the machine is ready to do the job now. It's all set.
Well, I did not sew straight at all. Oh my gosh. But you know what? I This is a snap on presser foot is what uh, Gloria uses. It tends to flux a little bit from side to side when you're sewing with it. It just does. So I'm going to give myself an alibi. And stop right there. Yeah, I didn't do bad, but I, yeah, I didn't do very well either. I didn't do very well at all. I'm like way off course. I'm way off course. Ah! But the machine did a great job. It made up for my not steering so straight. I can still fit those. Uh, I can still fit Renee's Stitch 88 and uh, Christine Christine's. Wait a second. Am I losing my mind? Christine. Christina, I apologize. I can still fit Christina's Stitch 99 as well. If I do a better job of steering this time. If I do a better job of steering. Okay, so let's take a look at this stitch we just did. Again, this was Emma's pick. Stitch number 90. Stitch number 90. All the way on the far right. There we go. Isn't that a gorgeous stitch? It almost looks like the Olympic thing, doesn't it? The Olympic thing where the, you know what I'm talking about. And again, if we were sewing with a smaller needle and maybe a specialty embroidery thread, boy, oh boy, we could get these things to pop even more. But they're they're popping already beautifully. So gorgeous top stitch. Let's turn around and look at that lock stitch. Gorgeous, gorgeous stitching. And again, if you're joining this late, we're sewing with a size 100, size 16 needle. We're using a very, very basic uh, Coates and Clark all-purpose thread. It's not a specialty thread. And the machine still, even with this lock stitch, is delivering near perfection. You guys know me about saying that the, any stitch is perfect. It can always get better, right? It can always get better. But we are near perfect, and we're definitely page 34. Absolutely amazing. Let's do these other stitches. We've got a stitch, uh, stitch 88 that Renee picked out. Let's do that one next. Stitch 88. Let me get this back into place. All right, I finally got it orientated. And hopefully I do a better job of sewing straight this time. I hope, I hope, I hope. There we go. It's a little bit, if you've never worked with, if you've mainly worked with straight stitch machines and you haven't really worked with a machine that has this tri-motion, it's almost like a vertigo thing when you're trying to guide the material and the feed dogs are manipulating it several stages back, several stages forward, et cetera, et cetera. It gets a little bit harder to steer it. So I'm going to use that as my excuse as to why I didn't do a better job with that last stitch. I did kind of a horrible job, didn't I? But that's okay. The machine made up for it. All right. So let's do Renee's stitch now. Renee picked uh, 88. So we're going to go down over here. And then we're going to go up over here. 81, 82, 83. 84, 85, 86, 87, and finally 88. And again, notice the machine already being as smart as it is coming from West Germany. It's already picked the width, the length, etc. So we don't have to bother with that. We could, but we're not going to. All right. 
If you'll allow me, I'm going to put on a little bit more music and kind of replay some of that ragtime because I, I love ragtime music. And uh, we will wrap up this live stream because it's getting rather late for our East Coasters. I'll turn our volume way down. All right, let's do this stitch. 88 for Renee. Here we go. Check my camera angle. There we go. Oh, what a classy pick. All of these are classy picks, but this one that Renee just picked, Stitch 88 is super cool. And it looks super cool next to Emma's Stitch number 90. Yeah, it does. Wow. Wow. All right, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. I don't want to go too fast because I'm dealing with a harpoon needle and very intricate movements. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. And stop. Perfect. Boy, I did a lot better that time. I did a lot better. I actually focused on what I was doing. Who knew? Well, this again is a stitch that Renee just picked out. And what a great choice. We had so many great choices. And there's so many more that we could sew, isn't there? There's so many more. All right, so let's look at this. This is our top stitch. I got to turn this music up. Hold on, guys. There we go. I'm going to pause right there for a second. So again, from left to right, left to right, stitch 96, hold on, stitch 96, 97, 55, 98, 52, 31, 94, 90, 88, and 99. Oh, we didn't do 99 yet. Never mind. Ha <laughs> ha. We're going to do 99 next. This is 88. <laughs> All right, let's look at that again. Lock stitch. Again, we would get so much better stitch definition and clarity of stitch if we had an appropriate needle. But you know what? We're rebels. We are. Thank you. 
Beautiful stitching. All right, our final stitch. Our final stitch. And Christina is not feeling well. We got to do Christina's stitch before she leaves. Hopefully, Christina has not left yet. Christina has hopefully not left the building. Otherwise, she could always watch this later. But we'll get into Christina's stitch straight away. All right, this is Christina's stitch now. And hopefully, this stitch will help her to feel better. So this is 99. We're doing stitch 99 now. So we're going to go up one and up one. That's it. We're done. All right, let's do the last stitch for Christina. And again, I hope it helps her to feel better. All right, stitch 99, 99, 99. Here we go. stop right there that's really a tricky thing to guide because of the manipulation of the feed dogs but i think i did a fairly good job and it worked out beautifully didn't it the number of stitches that you folks wanted to see we were able to fill up this entire piece of material that i pre-cut which is 100 percent cotton with a little bit of a stiffener in between and it worked out beautifully didn't it all right let's check this out All right, I think I have it orientated correctly. Yes, I do. So this is our top stitch. And I will try to read down the list, but we've got a lot of stitches. Let me get it set up here. All right, so from left to right, Paula's stitch 96. 97, Renee's, the next one, second from the left. Joelle's 55, Elaine's 98. Emma's 52, 31, 94. Emma's 90. Renee's 88. And finally, Christina's 99. All the way on the far right, we just did that one. Beautiful stitching, beautiful stitching. Lock stitch.
Well, I don't know about all of you, but I am impressed. Again, a machine that a lot of people would not consider to be a vintage machine from the late 1980s, early 1900s is when they made this model 1471. And it has performed beautifully with a less than ideal setup. Again, we're, we're sewing with some real cheapy thread by Coates and Clark. I'm probably getting a nasty note from Coates and Clark about calling their all-purpose thread cheapy thread, but it is compared to the specialty threads that Guterman make, Salky and others for sure. So the machine has done great. Plus we're sewing with a harpoon needle. What else can I say? The machine has danced through every single one of these stitches that we've done. And what I'd like to do to wrap up, as all of you are getting ready to, some of you get ready to go to bed because it's getting late where you are. Or maybe for Christina, it's getting even later. I think her, she's even later than uh, East Coast time. But I'd like to sew a little bit of leather just so we can say we did it. You know what I mean? And I'm going to sew a stitch that we haven't done yet. I just have to pick it out. Yeah. So we'll do a single layer of saddle grade leather first. And then I will attempt to do two layers of saddle grade leather on this semi vintage machine. We'll just say it's a, it's a quasi vintage machine, right? Yeah. So we'll get, we'll get this uh, saddle grade leather underneath the presser foot. All right, there we go. Now I have to decide which stitch I'm gonna do. Did we ever do 24? I don't think we did 24. I'm gonna do 24. 24 is kind of a fun one. I'll show you what it kind of looks like right there. It's on the bottom row there, the bottom row on the far left. Let's do that one. Let's do that one for fun. Yeah. So saddle grade leather, let's see how this machine does with that, that particular pattern, 24. All right, here we go. That's kind of a fun one. It almost looks like a beehive or something, doesn't it? If you were to duplicate this several more times, it kind of looks like a beehive, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Me likes it. Now we're going to double the stakes. Well, I'll show this to you up close first. But then we're going to double the thickness of this leather. It's a little bit dangerous because the machine is built well. It's built incredibly well, but it's not a genuine vintage all metal machine, is it? No, it's not. Saddle grade leather, folks. Saddle grade leather. Look at the thickness. Probably about three or four ounces. It's not crazy thick. Three or four ounces, though. Lock stitch? Eventually, the camera will focus. I know it will. It's a little tricky for it because it's trying to focus on the background, too. 
Come on, buddy. Come on. I'm just going to start moving it. Then it will have to focus. There we go. There we go. So not only can it sew 100% cotton, but it can also do an excellent job sewing saddle grade leather. A single layer, which is about three ounces, close to four. Now let's step it up and try to do two. I know, I know, I know. Why don't we just stop while we're ahead, doggone it? That's no fun. That's no fun. So we're going to hope that this lesson quality thread holds up to this. Because now we're going to be sewing through two layers of saddle gray leather. Yep, we're going to do it. And we're not going to do just a straight stitch. We're going to lay down something decorative. We got to do it. We got to do it. All right, let's see what I'll pick out now. Let's see what I'll pick out. Hmm, uh, let's see. Yeah, we haven't done that one yet. Let's do 66. Let's do 66. I'll show you what it looks like. Right there in the bottom row, uh, the fourth one from the right. Sixty-six. Yep, that's what we're gonna do next. All right, let's see how this machine does. I just got done fixing it. I hope I don't break it. I don't think I will. Hopefully. All right, we'll give it a go. We don't know if we don't try, right? Here we go. Oh, you guys guess the price. Does anyone want to try to guess the size of the motor in this machine? And they rate it by watts. So I'll give you the watts if you want to try to convert it. It's rated at 90, 90 watts, 90, 90 watts. You can convert that into amps or at least the amperage of the machine by converting it. So 90 watts, that's the motor that we're working with on this FOF 1471. All right, here we go. Let's see how we do with two layers of saddle grade leather i'm a little bit nervous because i did not test this i did not test this off camera i didn't test it i should have i didn't ah oh golly our last sew off i hope i don't crash and burn let's see here we go can't tell if the material is even moving is the material moving? I tell you, I'm not sewing very straight. That's for darn sure. All right, I got to see if it's even moving. I don't know if I have it all the way underneath the... I didn't. Hold on. Take two. I didn't even get it all the way underneath the presser foot. Ah, uh, hold on. Let me cut that end off. Again, I can't, I can't bump up the, I can't bump up the presser foot pressure on this machine. It's automatic. So I may be, I may be biting off more than I should chew. I may be biting off more than I should chew. Let me get it further underneath the presser foot this time. Otherwise, you might, might have to just be happy with one layer of saddle gray leather. This is a pretty big thing for this machine to do, especially doing a decorative ornamental type stitch.
Maybe too much for it. I'll try the other end. Ah, that's okay. We'll do it. Or we'll just resign to the fact that we can't. It may be too much. All right, I'm going to start right about there. All right, start right there. Now I'm definitely underneath the presser foot. And of course, I would try something like this on a needle that we've been beating up with all the other sew-offs. Why not, right? Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's try it again. It may be too much for this machine, but I'm going to try it anyway. Here we go. And I'm not even using the IDT. I'm not even using the walking foot. We're just going to let the feed dogs see if they can handle it. Let's see. And stop. So my problem the first time was my fault. I did not have it all the way. Oh, I showed you 66. I never changed. Oh, I left it on 24. It's getting late. I did 24 again. Oh. Whoops, our record is stuck. Hold on. Oh, gumdrops. Well, we saw stitch 24 done twice. I intended to do these two layers of saddle grade leather with stitch 66, and I didn't. Ugh. Oh, well. Let's take a look at it anyway. Could always cut another piece real quick, but... So this is stitch 24 a second time with two layers of saddle gray leather. See that as easy as the machine is to change stitches, I still didn't do it. Lock stitch. Well, again, where I missed the beat, the machine more than made up for it. And even though I didn't get a chance to sew Stitch 66, we sewed a lot of other things during this live stream. And again, the thing I love about live streams is you can't fudge it. It is what it is. So whether it's sewing two layers of saddle gray leather and not getting it all the way underneath the presser foot and kind of spinning my wheels we still did it anyway, even though it was a different stitch pattern than I intended. And it did a beautiful job. And then we did the single layer with the same stitch pattern, which maybe I did that subconsciously so we could say, well, how does the stitch pattern look two layers versus a single layer? Really no difference, no difference at all. And that speaks highly of how the machine performed, doesn't it? It speaks highly of how the machine performed top and lock stitch. So yeah, I did it on purpose. I didn't want to say it and brag, but yeah, I sewed 24 twice intentionally. Yeah, no, I didn't. I messed up. And then we did all of these stitches that all of you picked out, which I think are just phenomenal. We did all of these stitches during this live stream as well. So if you've ever thought about wanting to have a, a machine that does decorative stitching, it does it gives you a lot of choices as far as ornamental stitching. 
And I didn't look in the live chat to see if anyone did the conversion. Paula did the conversion. And Paula is absolutely right. This machine is equipped with an original German 0.75 amp motor. What is the significance of that? The significance of that is it's got more than enough power to not only so pretty like this, but also to knock out of the park uh, two layers of saddle grade leather also. Probably about eight ounces of leather. Or the thickness is probably close to four millimeters. So if you ever ever said to yourself, you know what, along with my vintage machines that do some beautiful straight and zigzag stitching, I'd love to be able to do stitching like this. What kind of machine would you recommend, Scott? I would strongly recommend you consider looking at a FA 1471 or the 1475. The 1475 gives you even more decorative ornamental stitch options than this one. But this is a phenomenal machine, and I think it's more than enough for the average uh, or even the advanced sewer that's looking to have some decorative quilt options to uh, put into their projects. So I want to thank all of you for your patience as we've gone. And, and some of you might be surprised how long we've been, or some of you maybe are clock watchers, but we went two hours and 30 minutes with this premiere because we wanted to do all of these options and we looked at the coffee and we talked about Tex-Mex and I still, I still, and I'll look, I'll look at the chat because I set it up with chat replay, but I still have no idea what this stuff is. The rest of the stuff I can kind of figure out, but this is a mystery. So I'll look at the replay of the text because you guys are so doggone smart. Some of you folks probably already know what this stuff is. I have no idea. So, but thank you again to Emily and Veronica for generously donating all of the coffee. I think eight, eight or nine bags, half pound bags. That's a lot of, that's a lot of money that they donated through the value of that coffee. Plus all the Tex-Mex stuff that they gave me as well that I can uh, enjoy. So, and thank you to all of you for picking these great stitches. All of you that stepped out of the shadows and picked these. And we'll be doing other machines like this as well. So if you sat back this time, no judgment, no problem. But hopefully you, you saw how we interact. We're very friendly. We're very non-threatening. And uh, we have a lot of fun, too, on top of it. Plus, if you're a little bit younger, you had a chance to hear an album play, a couple of albums play. And I'll get the, I'll get the other albums out of the back of the car that I have, and we'll do more album playing uh, in future live streams and premieres. So with that, I'm going to change the camera angle so you can look at this machine again. If you're kind of tempted, you know, eh, I don't know, I might get I might get one of these machines to go with my vintage collection. You know, it's kind of quasi-vintage from the 1980s, early 1990s. So I don't think anyone will judge you for doing that. Because I think this is a fabulous Western Germany machine. I really do. And I want to thank Gloria for bringing it in, into me. She took it to, and I'm not going to name names. I'll tell you that she took it to another machine servicing location in Wisconsin that is even further north than I am. And they didn't do such a great job on her machine. I'm not going to, yeah, I, I'm tempted, but I won't. I won't name where these folks are located, but I definitely hope that other folks will avoid going there. Yeah. Yeah. I've said too much. I haven't said enough. No, I've said too much. Yeah. All right. God bless you guys. Have a great evening. And uh, I'll turn the machine a little bit so you can look at this fantastic 1471. Put all the stitch offs up here. And like, that is that right no that's wrong that's right it's like that yep it's like that and then this i am so tempted to do one more sew off with pattern 66 i just feel like ah but you guys have been so patient already so patient yeah i don't know now i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it if you guys need to go i totally get it but I'm going to do pattern 66. I got to do it. I got to do pattern 66. I just got to do it. All right, let me put on some more ragtime. 
and uh, we'll do this last last show off. Just some fun music. I might even show it crooked like this. I don't know, because I show I show crooked already. So, yeah. All right, let me get some. Did I get it on the? Oh, I missed I missed the the record. How do they do that? Yes, there we go. to do this folks we're gonna do it i gotta do pattern 66 i'll actually remember to change it this time maybe i hope 66 so if anyone is in the live stream right now that submitted an essay for our last contest for the town of calico i'll be getting the uh your goodie boxes mailed off soon and then the grand prize winner is going to be coming to the workshop to pick up one of the uh, 170th anniversary uh, machines that I put as one of the choices for the grand prize winner. I got to do this, you guys. I know it's it's just totally crazy. It's totally crazy, but that's why you guys love me. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I'm going to clip off this little end. We got to do it, you guys. We had such a... A wonderful live stream, and then I sewed the same pattern twice. Ah! All right, let's move these to the side. Come over here, you beautiful, sexy German masterpiece. Let's do this. Yeah. All right, so this is what we're sewing, guys and gals. You probably can't even see it. I'll show it to you after. All right. Blah, 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 blah. All right, Scott, remember how easy it is to change the numbers? Change the numbers this time, for goodness sakes, buddy. We're on 24. Go up to 60. 66. Yes. Ha ha. Now we'll get something different, I hope. All right, here we go. And I'm not going to turn my music down. I'm going to be cranking this puppy because it's rag time, for goodness sakes. All right, here we go. Now you can see the thickness. Look at the side of that. And like Paula Noel said, 0.75 amps, baby. 0.75 amps. Here we go. Don't fail me now, baby. Don't fail me. You got this. You got this. You got this. I think we're stuck. I think we're stuck. Yep, we are. The layers kind of went off a little bit, so I'm going to stop there. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. That's a little too much for two layers of saddle grade. Plus, I didn't clamp them together. That's what we got. Yeah, I don't like it. Nope. That's probably why I didn't pick it the first time. All right, something else a little bit less complex that doesn't have tri motion. I've got a stubby little piece here. Don't give up. Don't give up. Come on, buddy. Good gravy.
And that's the only problem when you have automatic pressure foot pressure is when you get to something at this level, they never conceived of sewing something like two layers of saddle grade leather back in the day when this machine was made in the 1980s, 1990s. So you're dealing with a default presser foot pressure that you have no control over, which is kind of a bummer. But, oh well, it is what it is. All right, I'm gonna pick a different pattern. That one has tri-motion, it's a little bit too much. A little bit too much to do through this much leather. We got about almost eight ounces of leather. What else can I pick? Might be able to manage that. Let's try 60. I'll try 60 instead. All right, this is my last try. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We've already gone through two layers of saddle gray leather. I'm seeing if we can do this decorative pattern on it. Pattern 60, it might be a fail. I hope it isn't. Here we go. I'm gonna clamp it, hold on a second. At least for the initial launch, I'm going to clamp it here. That was a total success. And it's because I picked a stitch that didn't have the tri-motion. Tri-motion is too much for this machine when you're trying to sew two layers of saddle grade leather. It's too much. But this music is not too much. Yeah, baby. See that? We don't give up. If we run into a, a challenge, we're going to find a way to get around it. So the, the lesson to learn is don't try a tri-motion stitch with two layers of saddle grade leather. It's too much. It's too much! Ha <laughs> ha, yeah! All right, let's check this one out. Again, two layers of saddle grade leather, size, size 100, which is a size 16 needle, and we just laid down a beautiful, whatever this sucker is called, it's like a scallop thing or whatever. Beautiful pattern. Look at the thickness. <laughs> That's our lock stitch. All right, that's enough. That is enough. So finally, right to the end of the music. That was perfect. We're done. We're done. Yeah, that's correct. All right, you guys have a great evening. Thanks for persevering. I had to do it. I had to do a different pattern on the two layers. You just can't do the tri-motion. It's too much because the presser foot pressure is preset. It's controlled by the machine. If I could ratchet that presser foot pressure up, I could have done that block pattern, but I can't. So you got to know the limitations of a machine as well. 
if you're going to be sewing at this level with two layers of saddle grade leather, pick stitches that are not tri-motion. Tri-motion, again, is where that the feed dogs are manipulating that material, and then you're getting slippage between the two layers. It's inevitable, right? Because we can't bump up that presser foot pressure. But this 1471, made in Western Germany, has done a fabulous job. A fabulous job. I'm so impressed. Gloria, come pick up your machine. It's only 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night in East Coast. Probably 11 o'clock in Brazil. Yeah, there we go. We're done. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that was fun. That was fun. I mean, other than the tri-motion failure with the two layers of saddle gray leather, but oh well. Learn and live, right? Live and learn. Yeah. All right, until next time. Have a great night, everybody. God bless. Yes, you can come out here. I know you're from Germany. Everybody knows you're from Germany. Everyone knows you're from Germany. Wait a second, that's your mom? No way. Seriously? Come on, mom. Herr Obermeister definitely did not get the height in the family. No, he didn't. Yes, I get really goofy late at night, you guys. I get really goofy. <laughs> All right, I'll set you guys down. <laughs> oh, goodness. They can't see my hand. They think you're doing it by yourself, Mr. Bean. They do. There, that's better. That's more believable. Yes, go over and stand by the other people. Absolutely. All right. Signing off. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Oh, nice. Renee and Paula have become besties. I love it. That's one of the beauty, beautiful things about stepping out of the shadows, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, I like the name, Eddie. Eva or Eva. Is it Eva? Eva, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, have a great night, everybody. Yeah.